five minute with Eric. So what we're going to talk about is a little deeper on this employment uh, contract question. So real quick, five minutes on the clock. So let me tell you guys the fact pattern. So there's an there's a organization, they have about 35 employees, they have an executive director with a salaried agreement. So let's dig a little bit deeper on that. So not everyone is allowed to be paid a salary. There are certain jobs, and in fact, the way that the law is drafted, it's most jobs, people are entitled to be paid on an hourly basis, and if they work more than 40 hours in a one week period, then they're entitled to time and a half overtime. Right, And so if they work 50 hours in a week, the, the last 10 hours, they're gonna get 1.5 times whatever their normal hourly rate is. Those people are called non-exempt employees. Now, of course, we've heard of people getting salaries. Those people are called exempt employees. And an exempt employee, they can be paid a fixed amount over a period of time, and that amount doesn't go up or down if one week you work 30 hours and the next week you work 50 hours, you get paid the same amount every two weeks or whatever the pay period is. And so those people, again, are called exempt employees, and there's only four exceptions or four allowances to become an exempt employee. One of them is professionals, um, and that's either legal or scientific or basically some sort of, they, they say you have to use your brain, um, and uh, us, us lawyers, we have licenses, we are allowed to be paid salary. In fact, that's the normal way for lawyers to be paid. Um, then there are actually creative professionals, so that's the professional exception. Um, number two is what we call executive exception. So that is where we have people that are typically leading organizations. Um, number three, we have what's called the administrative exception, and that is people that are in, an, in a management role in an organization. So they might not be the executive, but they might be the day-to-day -day manager who's managing the actual, uh, the shift workers, for example. Um, and then we have outside sales professionals, okay? So in this case, this is the administrative exception to the Fair Labor Standards Act. So this person was paid a high salary, almost $200,000 a year. So I'm reviewing this contract because obviously, like what's the trigger that makes this all happen? The person tenders their resignation. They kind of had a little bit of a uh, snappy resignation letter throwing some shade at the uh, company they were working for. Um, and they gave their 45 days notice as put in the contract. Now, side note, um, it is completely up to the employer if they want to accept the 45 day notice. So, you know, I've seen circumstances where they're like, I'm putting in my 45 day notice and they're like, okay, bye, you can leave today and never come back. We don't need you to, your services are no longer required here. Um, and so in this case, they've, they've agreed to accept the 45 day notice. And so what happens? They pull out the contract and they hand it to the company's lawyer and the company's lawyer might be reading this for the first time, or maybe they haven't seen it in four or five years. Whenever it was originally drafted, it might've been drafted by somebody else. And so they're going through the contract and there is two things in there that are, that are of particular note. One is it has a clause that builds in a three month severance. It says that when the, after the termination of the agreement, they'll be entitled to three months of their normal salary plus all their full benefits, which is healthcare, 401k, et cetera. Um, and then a little bit later on, there is a non-compete and it's a three month non-compete. So even though the two paragraphs aren't next to each other and they don't refer to each other, you could make a pretty good argument that it was contemplated, hey, if you want me to sit at home and not work for three months, you gotta pay me. Um, which by the way, is the normal way that non-competes are done in Europe. So in Europe, you could have a five year non-compete, but you're gonna pay the guy to sit at home for five years. Um, not like in America where you can have a five year non-compete. There's no guarantee of severance unless it's usually offered or included in the contract like it is in this case. Um, and, 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 you know, people just either have to move or they have to work in a different profession or whatever it is. So this lawyer calls me, he's like, Eric, I just want a second opinion. Can you look at this contract? So here's what I do. So first things first, I go to the end. I always read contracts from the bottom up. Because believe it or not, at the end is a lot of times where you're gonna find the clauses that are impactful, like dispute resolution, attorney's fees, uh, jurisdiction. And so also, I kinda wanna see how long the contract is. And like, hey, let's make sure it's been signed. So sure enough, I say it's a five-page contract. Page five was just signatures. So it's really just a four-page contract. So now I'm going through it backwards, and I do not see dispute resolution. I do not see attorney's fees. I do not see jurisdiction. Right, so right off the bat, I'm like, ooh, this is kind of a bad contract. What else am I seeing? The formatting is a little funky. The font is not a normal font that a lawyer would use. So I'm actually starting to think to myself that maybe a lawyer didn't draft this. Maybe it was either cobbled together off of an old example, whatever. 
Um, and so the moral of the story is if you are entering into a job, that's when you need to think about your exit. I know it's hard to wrap your head around, but when you're starting a job, you need to say, hey, if they fire me someday, I want severance. So negotiate it when you're starting the job. Because if you don't negotiate when you start it, then you're not entitled to it unless out of the goodness of their heart or maybe they're trying to buy you off. But that's, you know, you never know. So please, any of you, if you're an employer, please have better employment contracts. This one was bad. And for 1500 bucks, we could have made it much stronger and better. Um, and if you're an employee, think about talking to a lawyer when you're negotiating your entrance. And of course, when you're negotiating your exit. So if you have any questions about this, go in the comments below. Um, and tell me how much you like my video and hopefully we'll talk soon. Bye.